Welcome back. So let's start with a quick overview of some of the general features of what do we mean when I say rubber elasticity or rubber-like elasticity. And you can see we have here a force extension curve. So a 200%, a 100% extension means I've doubled the length uh, of the uh, of my polymer chain. And so we have large reversible but highly nonlinear elastic deformation. Um, without cross-linking, uh, significant cross-linking, molecules in the extended configuration just slide past each other, right? You only have van der Waals forces holding the chains together, so that gives you a non a non-reversible uh, deformation. Um, so we need some kind of cross uh, linking. We're going to look at both some basic thermodynamics and uh, statistical molecular theories to derive uh, our constitutive laws for these materials. Important thing is uh, we have roughly no change of volume for uh, rubber elasticity. Um, so our bulk modulus is several orders of magnitude larger than the shear modulus, which if we look at and make the shear modulus approximately Ah, oh, the fun. Okay. If we look here and make uh, our shear modulus very small, right, we end up with a Poisson's ratio of about one half. And as we had mentioned before and last week, that polymers, for the most part, are rubbers, are mostly entropic, uh, entropic springs. Right, we have few conf chain configurations at very large extensions, but many possible configurations at re in the relaxed state. So it's all driven by the uh, uh, the amount of possible arrangements of the chains that your system can take. So let's go through some thermodynamics. This is going to bore some of you, but it's worthwhile to follow along. Um, or please follow along. So let's start with our combined second law. So the our increment in internal energy is equal to our increment in heat plus our increment in work. So we can just rewrite this as TDS plus DW. And we can rewrite our work as the force times the change in length, or FDL, plus TDS. So we already said experimentally we observed constant volume, so let's work with our Helmholtz free energy, right, A, which is uh, internal energy minus Ts. So for a change at constant volume and at constant temperature, right, our increment in Helmholtz free energy is going to be our increment in internal energy minus Tds, or that tells us that our change in Helmholtz free energy is going to be equal to our work increment. So the what uh, causes this? The joys of technology. Um, So our change in Helmholtz free energy is our change is our work increment that's applied. So the force to cause a stretch, our stretch is dl, so that's going to be the partial derivative of work with respect to length at constant temperature and volume, which we already said is equal to our change in partial derivative of Helmholtz free energy at constant temperature, or our, we can plug, go back up to here and plug in, our change in internal energy with constant with respect to length at constant temperature and volume minus our change in entropy with change in length at constant uh, temperature. All right. So, for a non-isothermal change in the Helmholtz free energy, right? If we're going to allow temperature to change 
we have our increment in Helmholtz is equal to our increment in internal energy minus TDS minus SDT. We need a full differential here. Okay, but we said that DU is equal to, on the other previous page, is FDL plus TDS. So therefore we can substitute that in here and we have our uh, increment in Helmholtz is equal to F times our increment in length, our force times our increment in length, minus S times our temperature increment. So let's take our partial derivatives of this expression. Change in partial Helmholtz partial length at constant temperature gives us force. And change partial Helmholtz partial temperature at constant length gives us our change in entropy, gives us the entropy. Um, and we can take second derivatives. And we can use the fact that our second derivatives are independent of order to develop a Maxwell relationship. So if we take the derivative, so we'll take the second derivative of Helmholtz with respect to temperature at constant length, and then take the partial derivative with respect to length. Or we take the derivative of Helmholtz with respect to length at constant temperature, and then take the derivative with respect to temperature. They have to be equal. So that gives us the relationship that the change in entropy with respect to length at constant temperature has to be equal to the negative of the change in force with change in temperature at a constant length. So our force equation then becomes, our force is equal to uh, change in internal ener partial internal energy, partial length at constant temperature, plus the temperature with respect, or change in force with respect to change in temperature at constant length. All right, so this is just playing around with the thermodynamic relationships. We're not doing anything fancy here, so just follow the, the derivation through. So let's rearrange that for our increment in our incre change in where am I going? Our increment in internal energy is equal to force times our temperature minus our partial F partial T at change in length. So we've moved all the force terms over to one side. So this is a a first order partial differential equation that relates our internal energy, force, and temperature fields. So there's some experimental work in that from 19 going back to 1935. So Meyer and Ferry, they looked, they did an experiment where they held a piece of rubber at a constant length, changed the temperature up and down, and recorded the force that was required to hold uh, that, that piece of rubber at a constant deformation, and they found that it was linear. The force was directly proportional to the uh, absolute temperature. So we can plug this relationship in, so partial F partial T at constant length is just alpha. We plug that up here for here, and we plug alpha T in for here, and we get that the change in internal energy with respect to our change in length at constant temperature equals uh, zero. So what this tells us is that as we deform, if we deform slowly so that we have no temperature change, if we deform quickly, we're going to have a temperature change. But if we deform a rubber slowly enough that we have no temperature change, our internal energy remains constant. So the elasticity in polymers has to arrive entirely um, due to changes uh, in the entropy, and that's to a to a first approximation. So stop there. Pick it back up with some continuum theories of polymer uh, deformation.